Sure. Okay, the, th the yeah. thing was, is, is then we, try, we, we, we had to get other people involved. And a real good story comes to mind. I remember me calling Leonard Falcone, who was resisting growing and joining the group. And the reason why he was rejoining, because of TU, TU Universal Brotherhood Association. He thought it was a mafia. He thought it was a mafia kind of thing. <laughs> he and told I called him. When I, yeah, I know. And I called him. <laughs> and he says, come on. I says, I'm, I'm going to do that. You know, I'm Italian. So, uh, you know, and, 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 and in that name. And sort of he giggled and threw in support. But we had a call, like Abe Torchinsky um, and, and, and people like that. And then after the next symposium, we decided, well, we're going to have a national. And I did that in Illinois. And what I thought was, is how to draw attention. Winston and I, of course, we're, we're, we're spinning all that. I said, why don't we have a competition, you know, solo competition, you know. That way we can generate some new literature, get some people to write for us. And I remember inviting Roger Bobo to play, who was a little bit reluctant at first. And can't mm -hmm. blame him. But I said, Roger, come. We're going to show you one heck of a good time. And, you know, we did that with the jazz guys, too. I, I invited Howard Johnson again and try to set it up as a little different thing, but having competitions so the students could get involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and I remember the guy who won the solo competition at that time was young Fritz Kainzik, and he played the living snot <laughs> out of the craft. I, I remember that, you know. I, I think you guys judged it. And then Lou Picorni was here, and, 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 and the guys from... From LA, so it was a really good hang. But we partied, and they saw you know Roger just says, "Hey man, oh, that's the best time I had." So we got that involved. And of course, when you get people like Roger involved and other things start to go a little bit easier to do the groundwork, they took us serious, you know. But through Winston here in that journal. I mean, he wrote that all the time. It was unbelievable the stuff that would turn out. You and we would invent it. You got to talk well, about. Well, we just that. did the. Um, <laughs> on a newsletter. Yeah. And uh, it was just the we had no budget. the official publication. There was no budget at no all. No budget. Well, we got a little and, bit of support uh, from that. And so ago. literally, I don't know, for the first five or six years that okay. we did the uh, newsletter, I just I just put this together. And I'd contact people, say, you know, I'd, I'd beg people to write stuff. If I couldn't get somebody, I'd make up an article and make up a name. or whatever. I did anything I had to do to put a six, eight-page newsletter out. And I got copies of all those early, yeah, early ones I do and too. everything. And uh, but no, that was that was the um, but you had to have that publication. You had to have some means of communication to tie all this together, and that's what the newsletter was all about. Because the whole thing would have fallen apart if you didn't have that. There was no email, guys. There was no internet, and you know, so you know, and you know, you either picked up the telephone or. Or you send you you sat down with a typewriter and you type these things out and then you print them up. You send them to the printers, print them up, and mail them out. But uh, but that was the official communication, and it was a very important part thing to do. You had to have some kind of communication going there. That's why I was in, in the original formation of this. I said I really want to do this. I want to do this mm -hmm. this, this newsletter. And then I ultimately turned it over to Bob Whaley up at uh, Western Michigan. And he became the next. Uh, he ran that for quite a while. Did a real fine job with it. But that was that was the, the you know the means primary means of communication. Well, in, in that particular time in Illinois, um, I had a colleague, uh, Tom Sive, He was a percussion teacher, and and he was they had that percussion PAS going really good. I got a lot of advice from him. I really wanted to UBA to do that, like the percussion, but we could never get the membership. And I remember writing the Constitution. In fact, you know, Harvey wanted to, have, what, what our goal was to have an international brass society. And everybody yeah. went off to little branches. But before that, we were, we were involved. There was no trumpet. There was no trombone. Okay. And I remember we had a meeting with Harvey. He was having the first brass congress. Well, we've got to get the trumpets going. So Dave Hickman's on my faculty, all right? Yeah, it's amazing. And it so took, you it spin took a, it off. It took a tuba player yeah. to, to right. inspire, and it took the tubists getting organized really first. Yeah. And and then and then once that got going, and it was Harvey yeah. that really saw this from an international perspective and also saw it from the perspective of we got to get the trumpets going, we got to get the horns going, we got to get the trombones going, because he wanted to have an international brass society. Well, you know, the reason behind and, that is, too, is just you can't get grants for just two, but if we all got together, an international brass society, we could get government grants. It's easier to get a grant that way. And we got some quintets out of it. Yeah, and it was, you know, and it was, it was, you know, we had an international brass congress when we went over to Switzerland, well, right? Montreal, Switzerland, Montreal, Switzerland, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and it was quite a good thing. But the resistance was, you know, I mean, everybody, the horn wanted their own little thing. They had the horn call starting, and and, uh, and too bad we didn't go that route. 
you know, but a lot. Of, but but now look at IT. Har Harvey was the primary motivator behind <laughs> it, and then we had the second International Press Congress here at Indiana here, here University. In Indiana, I don't want to say '88. I don't remember the year. Uh, 84. 84. 84. So and then, but it was all Harvey that was driving that aspect of it because. There were all the stuff was just more. Our brains are a lot smaller than Harvey's, and we didn't think as big as Harvey did. I mean, almost nobody on the planet did. Well, Harvey's goal you know, was, you know. So I, we, it was all we could do to think about the tuba stuff. And as Harvey, he's already got the tuba thing. Now he's got the trumpet thing. Now he's organizing the whole, the whole, uh, all the other brass societies. Now he's got the whole world tied up in this. And that's that's the scope of Harvey's thinking. Well, you know, you know. the statement he made is, look at. It takes the same energy to think big as it does small, right? Yeah. He says, if you think big, you can cut it down a little bit. But if you think small, you can't go anywhere. And that was his philosophy. In, in I mean, he said in the spring of '74, just before I left Tennessee, uh, Harvey convinced me and you guys to have the first regional tuba conference, mm -hmm. which we had at University of Tennessee. You you were involved mm -hmm. in that, and Tommy Johnson came from the LA, mm -hmm. and Brian Bowman. And uh, that was the beginning of that, which is which has gone on pretty much every two years. These were the regional, regional, the regional, regional, what we call regional, what it was, yeah. now or yeah. something like that, yeah. right? You see, and, and still uh, back in those days, it was still national because we didn't have many Europeans involved. We, we, we yeah. you know, it took us a while to get going. Always wanted it. If at first there was this, you know, international and national and. I remember the, the one that when I did get to Los Angeles and I was there four or five years, I hosted the third, yeah. called the Third International. We, we did it mm -hmm. in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. which was. Uh, and, and all of us, and that was out of our own pocket, too. That's and you right. had no budget. I mean, you lost, you lost big time. I lost about 5,400 of my own bucks uh, uh -huh. for that thing be, just because we had to, had to get the people there. Harvey's went down 50 grand in the first one. You know, mm -hmm. the university covered it, but, but, but you know, I remember when, I, when out, I came here, you know, hey. You we know, came out of 1973 conference with 100 new pieces for that's tubas. That's right. 100 new pieces. That were composed for, for to be that. premiered at the conference. At the conference. So you say, well, you know, what did their TUB, ITA have accomplished? Just any single one of those international congresses, uh, symposiums that we've ever had, any one of those has generated dozens of new pieces. Mm -hmm which means hundreds of new pieces in the last right. 35, 40 years. Hundreds that would, otherwise would not have been composed. 